The following podcast is a deep, shallow dive production. Okay, let's go. I think one of the challenges that we're seeing right now is that is that there is such hurt, there is such grief, there is such anger across the country because of what's going on in the Middle East that people are forgetting a little bit. And we have to remember that just waving a Palestinian flag is not automatically anti-Semitism. And someone expressing grief for you know, hostages taken is not an endorsement of uh, dead civilians. The reality is the polarization we are seeing in Canada that is replicated around the world, the rise at the same time of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia is really scary, not just for who we are as Canadians, but for any hope of seeing uh, over the coming days, weeks, months, a uh, move towards a two-state solution where a free, independent, safe Palestinian state uh, is thriving alongside a free, independent, safe Jewish state of Israel. This is what we need to get to, and as long as Canadians are forgetting who we are and lashing out at each other uh, for reasons of deep and understandable hurt, um, it becomes more more difficult uh, to to actually do the kinds of things that the world needs Canada to be, to be doing. Happy Wednesday, everybody. First of all, thank you for all the kind words about yesterday's episode in regards to Julian Assange. I really appreciate it. Gosh, I literally, I received the most messages I've ever received, actually, on any episode. And a lot of it was people just saying, wow, I did not really understand the situation behind him. I've heard his name before, but didn't really know the whole deal. I had a few people actually like send me other clips that they're like, Hey, did you ever see this? Did you ever see this? So I'm going to include those in an upcoming update on that. But anyway, just wanted to say thank you for all that. If you didn't get a chance to listen, I really think yesterday's episode was, you know, worthwhile. It was part of the Deep Shallow Dive exclusive series. It's number five on the exclusives. So far, we've had Sound of Freedom, 9-11, JFK, Bernie Sanders, and this was number five. So... Anyway, I appreciate that. So that clip I played for you at the beginning of this episode, that was Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, obviously. And, you know, honestly, God, again, this goes to my to my newfound embracing of, you know, judging the take and not the person and the overall situation. And And what I mean by that in regards to Justin Trudeau is, you know, in all honesty, I can't say I've agreed with much that he's done over or much that he did over COVID. You know, I was not a fan of the way he handled the truckers, the truckers boycott. You know, he literally shut down truckers bank accounts and all that. I mean, it was it was pretty, pretty overstepping, in my opinion, and almost kind of like a case study template to show what the government has the ability to do when it comes to your finances and things like that. So again, I can't say overall I've been, you know, a tremendous fan of Justin Trudeau, but I will say, you know, I thought what he said in that interview, which uh, took place on Monday, you know, I thought it was very insightful and it's worth listening to. And, you know, I've really been trying to do this and it's, it's, it's kind of the opposite of what I'm seeing most people on social media do. And that is, you know, even that clip. So, so I read the comments under that and I probably read 50 of the comments, right? And there were probably like 2000, but in the 50, you know, nobody critiqued the comment. They just critiqued their thoughts on Justin Trudeau. The funniest one was truckers, truckers joining the chat. That was pretty funny. But again, I mean, you know, everybody just launched in on their their dislike or their 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 um approval of Justin Trudeau, but nobody really analyzed what he was talking about. And I'll tell you, it's been interesting. I have seen, you know, we've talked about it before, Emmanuel Macron, Justin Trudeau. These guys have kind of broken away from from the United States and definitely from Rishi Sunak over in England in terms of, you know, now 
calling for not only a ceasefire, but calling for a two-state solution. And if you're not really familiar with a two-state solution or you don't totally understand what that means, basically that's saying that they should take Israel and really divide it. I don't know if it'll be 50-50, but basically give the Palestinians their own land and their own everything. And I'm assuming change that section of the country to the change it back to calling it Palestine. And then the rest of it obviously stays Israel. And it's, it's actually very surprising that Trudeau and Macron seem to be calling for this. I'm, 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 I am very surprised about that, but I will tell you that is definitely not on Benjamin Netanyahu's radar at all. He has no desire for a two-state solution. He is all about a one-state solution. I'm going to play some stuff that speaks to that. But anyway, I did want to start off with the clip on Trudeau. And again, I want to drive home the point. When you hear something, just try and judge what you're hearing and, and have an opinion or add that to your knowledge bank in terms of what you're hearing, instead of, you know, getting hung up in the weeds by judging who you're hearing it from. You know, I can tell you right now, I've been incredibly surprised with myself in terms of, you know, different things from different folks that I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm agreeing with that person. But, but honestly, that's awesome. I think that's awesome. I really do. I think that's great to be able to Break out of your own narrative, you know, break out of your own biases toward people in order to say, hey, you know what? Wow. Okay. That person, not someone I normally agree with, but you know what? In this case, I do like what they said about X, Y, Z. And then tomorrow you might not like what they say about A, B, C, but again, that's okay because you're really trying to just improve your entire knowledge base when it comes to specific subject matters. All right, so today I know it's the day before Thanksgiving and I'm going to just use today to really catch up on some things that I've kept in an in a iPhone note. Actually, I'm using a new app called Notion and it's basically a way for me to organize my thoughts in terms of upcoming episodes and I'm actually going to do an episode on all the different technology apps that I've been using cuz cuz <laughs> Honestly, I'm using a ton of them. It's pretty it's pretty cool actually. So, let me catch you up on some things in case you haven't really heard about these cuz I do think they're they're worthwhile to have a little bit of a working knowledge from so you can so you can be the hit of Thanksgiving. By the way, I know everybody for Thanksgiving, don't forget to bring up the petrodollar. <laughs> Definitely bring up the petrodollar. That'll be a hit. You probably want to stay away from Israel Palestine talk at the Thanksgiving table. That could that could not go well depending on what various sides are sitting on. But I think the petrodollar is a safe one to bring up because that's more of a topic, you know, a generalized topic. All right. So first thing, chat GPT. Wow, craziness with that. If you haven't heard the their board of directors ousted the founder, Sam Altman, on Friday, then supposedly brought him back. And then basically where we're at now is it does look like he has left ChatGPT and OpenAI, and he signed on with Microsoft, who pretty much is the primary investor in OpenAI. And so now he is basically a Microsoft employee, and he's going to be leading their AI efforts, which led to Microsoft's stock hitting an all-time high. Wish I had not sold mine a while back, but oh well. And by the way, shout out to Grady Patterson. He gets his own shout out. I'm not even mentioning his dad's name, but Grady is the one who tipped me off on that. I think it was Friday night or Saturday night. He DM'd me on Instagram and said, did you hear about Sam Altman? So I was like, I did not. And then I looked it up and I posted something and I gave Grady scoop credit. So there you go. Grady, you're the man. Scoop credit. 17 years old. On top of things. I love it, buddy. So this whole thing, you know, that's kind of big news. I mean, that guy 
definitely seemed to be a operational CEO, not just one that, you know, is kind of the, the talking head, but he seemed to really be driving a lot of the innovations at chat GPT. So that's, uh, that, that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. What I did love about what happened was the company over 700 employees basically said, Hey, we're all going to quit unless you guys, unless you guys bring Sam back and get rid of the board and bring on a new board. And it doesn't look like that's happening. So that'll be interesting to see if all 700 employees quit. I'm sure they would all get absorbed right into Microsoft. So, you know, big changes on the, on the AI front. I will say this about Sam Altman. He, he absolutely has been a, a big proponent of bringing regulation to AI. And so when I had originally heard about his ousting, I'll be honest, in my mind, I was like, oh man, if they get rid of him, who's a proponent of regulation. And again, I'm normally not that big of a proponent of regulation, but this does need to get reined in a little bit because unregulated AI is going to be a complete nightmare, especially for the election coming up next year. It is so easy to fake stuff. I mean, it is so easy to fake stuff. And there's something I'm going to talk about here in a little bit that honestly seems fake to me when I've watched the video over and over again. But whether it comes to obviously synthesizing voices, whether it comes to creating different imagery, you know, whatever, whatever that is, it's very easy to leverage artificial intelligence for evil and, and, and really create things that are fake that quite frankly are indistinguishable to the truth. So anyway, little update on that. We'll see what happens with chat GPT. All right, next topic. I did want to just talk about Nikki Haley a little bit and, and share with you guys what I'm seeing. And I am absolutely seeing a, a complete shift from Ron DeSantis to Nikki Haley in terms of the, Republican GOP support outside of Trump. Let's take Trump out of the equation for a second. But it it is, I'm telling you, this stuff is chess and the queen has taken the bishop. I think, I think DeSantis is out. Nikki Haley's in. We've talked about this before. I think the stage is too big for him. But over the weekend, there was things where Jamie Dimond, the, the incredibly powerful, the most powerful banker in the world, the CEO of Chase, of JP Morgan Chase. He came out as advising Nikki Haley. And then right after that, they launched uh, a Nikki, Nikki Haley launched a $10 million ad campaign against DeSantis, which I don't need. I don't really think she even needs to do that. Cause I honestly think DeSantis is like made his own bed, which is to be to be done out of this, but I am seeing a tremendous shift in overall support. I'm seeing the media get behind Nikki Haley. So I, I, I really think Nikki Haley is in play. I think she's in play for the presidency, to be honest with you, not just for the Republican nomination for, for the big show. I really do. And I'm not going to lie. I think that because she plays ball, she plays ball. She absolutely plays ball. And it looks like she can handle that stage where, you know, maybe DeSantis was playing ball, but he just, I don't know. He just can't handle the stage. So anyway, update on Nikki Haley. Like I said, I absolutely think moving forward, you're going to see more and more and more from her. And it'll be interesting to see that last debate, see how that plays out. But I really do think Nikki Haley is being propped up to to be a player in this race that 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 could actually end up winning it if they decide to move in a different direction from from the Democratic Party. All right, so next thing and you know what I I left this out of yesterday's episode a little bit on purpose because I did want to kind of focus it on Julian Assange, but I did want to bring it up because I did have a few people basically ask me about it. So Chelsea Manning, who was the 22 year old, I think she was a Marine at the time. And she was the one that basically sent all the documents 
to Julian that he uploaded into WikiLeaks, and obviously the most damning being the video of the the military folks basically just firing on the Reuters reporter and the innocent civilians, and then that kind of launching the whole WikiLeaks stuff. So a couple things on her. First of all, Chelsea Elizabeth Manning was born Bradley Edward Manning. So there's that. She was given a 35-year prison sentence, but then President Obama commuted that to seven years, time served, starting in 2010, and basically 2017, she got out. Looks like now she is a public speaker, so I'll actually see if I can go find maybe one of her speeches and play some of it in an upcoming episode. So anyway, she was in prison for 35 years, got out, looks like after seven You know, as I talked about yesterday, obviously Obama had the chance to commute Julian Assange's sentence, even though he was in, he was in England still, you know, you can work this stuff out and and Trump had the same chance. So, you know, it's actually, I, not to say I like that because I don't, because I feel awful for Julian Assange, but like, I do think, you know, you guys, uh, the DSD nation We rise above all this stuff. We really do. We try to rise to 30,000 feet and look down. So when you look down from 30,000 feet, whether you're a Democrat or Republican or, or libertarian or independent or whatever you are, you know, think about that. President Obama could have hooked up Julian. President Trump could have hooked up Julian. President Biden could have hooked up Julian. But nobody's doing it. Neither one of those three, and and especially Obama and Trump, because you're talking about, you know, two incredibly powerful forces who have the clout to get to get things done. You know, that's there's something to that. There's something to that. There definitely is. Okay, next up, in case you missed it, we've talked about this before. The Pentagon has failed their audit for the sixth year in a row. And it was a $3.8 trillion audit, which they failed when asked for comment. The defense department chief financial officer said, and I quote, we feel like the seventh time will be the charm. I still get my bonus, right? Unquote. You seriously cannot make this stuff up. Although I just did make that up. That's not what he said. That was my joke. But anyway, come on, John Stewart. We need another. We need another. Another rant from you about this. Seriously, that's the sixth time in the row the Pentagon has failed their audit. That is not acceptable. All right, I did want to give a quick shout out to another college friend, Amber Keen, married to Todd who both are listeners, although I think Todd listens more than Amber does, but I woke up last week to a picture (laughs) that Amber had sent me of a Vivek bumper sticker on the back of somebody's car. And so we got into a nice little, a nice little back and forth chat. It was great to catch up with her. And the one funny line that I texted her, which I thought I'd read is she was talking about how she was a little shocked that there was a bumper sticker out there, which, which I am too, actually. I'm sure shocked there's Vivek bumper stickers. And then she said, he's well-spoken for sure. Your clip of him and Barack's speeches lends toward him being a copycat or was it AI? Who knows? And then I wrote, no worries and all good. Regarding Vivek, it's not that I am Team V. Well, I am Team V, but different V. Shucky ducky quack quack. (laughs) Shucky ducky quack quack. All right, I thought that was funny. And that was literally impromptu. But I did want to finish the rest of what I wrote. I said, I am Team V, but different V. I just like his disruption, and I really have come to realize there is a uniparty, and these career politicians are the problem. And I put career politicians in caps for emphasis. Anyway, thanks, Amber. You made my day. 
I continue to enjoy hearing from people, especially my East Coast friends, because like I say, or my East Coast and Midwest friends, being a West Coaster now, I wake up to funny text messages. That's a nice way to wake up. It's actually hilarious. All right, since I know everyone's wanting to get ready for Thanksgiving, you know, I did want to actually give thanks to everybody that has really you know, given me a chance with this thing and listened and provided me feedback, provided me comments, provided me encouragement, provided me criticism. Honestly, I I really appreciate the criticism as well, but I really do. I really want to give thanks to everybody. You know, obviously this was something that I had been wanting to do for a long time and And I appreciate you guys, you know, including me in your day or your evening or your walk or your treadmill or your driving the kids to school or driving to the office or really just including me in your day. That that's a really special feeling. And I really do appreciate that. You know, there were a couple people that really that really pushed me towards doing this. And in in that vein, I wanted to play for you guys. Well, actually, before I get there. Again, thank you, everybody. I really do appreciate it. I hope this has been valuable. I hope listening to these episodes, you know, has helped you, you know, maybe learn something, maybe think about something differently, or maybe reinforce what you are thinking, uh, and whether that's agreeing with me or disagreeing with me. But I really do appreciate it. I, I look forward to continuing on this. And like I said, continuing to try to, you know, search for the truth together through the lens of common sense. That's what deep, shallow diving is all about. And that's what I'll try to continue to do. Anyway, I did want to play this for you. And I'm going to end with this. It's it's a quote that, honestly, I've loved for a long time. And I've wanted to kind of, you know, have this as part of my podcast. So I think today's episode is a perfect way to end it. You guys may have heard it before, some of you. It's called People Come Into Your Life for a Reason, a Season, or a Lifetime. And, you know, I definitely have had the first two, but what I feel so fortunate about, and as crazy as this sounds, this podcast is a way to really accentuate that is, I've got a lot of I've got a lot of friends that fall in that lifetime category and and I really do appreciate that. So anyway, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you guys have a wonderful time with your families and just get a chance to enjoy the most important thing which is family and friends and give this a listen and we will see you on Monday. People come into your life for a reason, a season or a lifetime. When you figure out which one it is, you will know what to do for each person. When someone is in your life for a reason, it is usually to meet a need you expressed. They have come to assist you through a difficulty, to provide you with guidance and support, to aid you physically, emotionally, or spiritually. They seem like a godsend, and they are. They are there for the reason you need them to be there. Then, without any wrongdoing on your part, the relationship will end. Sometimes they die. Sometimes they walk away. Sometimes they act up or out and force you to take a stand. What we must realize is that our need has been met and their work is done. The prayer you sent up has been answered and it is now time to move on. When some people come into your life for a season, it is because they have come there to share with you, help you grow, or learn from you. They bring you an experience of peace or make you laugh. They may teach you something you have never done. They usually give you an unbelievable amount of joy. Believe it. It is real. But this is only for a short period of time. Lifetime relationships teaches you lifetime lessons, things you must build upon in order to have a solid emotional foundation. Your job is to accept the lesson, love the person, and put what you have learned to use in all other relationships and areas of your life. This episode was brought to you by Boost Liquid Vitamins. Wake up, take your boost, start your day. Drink your vitamins, build your immune system with Boost. Available on Boost.com.